This hotel is so fancy. My camera lens needs to clean. My goodness. Hi. Oh. It's blue tea. Blue tea? Yeah. Blue tea? Made with butterfly pea flower. Oh, butterfly pea flower. Thank you. But made with what? Butterfly pea flower. Oh. Hmm. Ginger it is lemon lemon, lemon grass. Yeah. Yes. Very good. And this is good over for you. Mm hmm? Who you wipes your hair? Thank oh, you. Thank you. Then we can allow for the taking it. I know she called me saying that. They, really? And I said they have your reservation. Yeah. This is so cute. Do you want me to follow you? Do you want me to follow you? I'll follow you. Okay, I'm walking to my room now. I just wanted to make sure she got to her room safely, you know, and found it. I wasn't walking around in circles. So now my room is actually on the ground floor, which I have no problems with. This is a beautiful hotel though. Like, oh, it's so pretty. I love it. Y'all know I love luxury. And luxury don't mean like completely high end because there's a lot of natural elements to this hotel, but it's just beautiful. That's all. All right. Y'all look at this. It's just all sitting here. Okay, let's find my room. I'm in 510. What does the numbers start at? Oh gosh, 520. So that means I'm all the way down the hall too. Wow. Right. You too. When I walk up to the room, she was bringing my luggage in. Look at this, fancy. In these situations, they got robes. Hey. She brought my luggage. It's pretty. I am so happy. I stuck to my gut and got a single room. <laughs> oh gosh, oh, a gift from our girlfriend what does it say you are finally here and the 2024 girlfriendism retreat has officially begun we are so happy that you chose us for this women's empowerment experience and we can't wait to make your adventure unforgettable let the girlfriendism in bali begin with this token of love your girlfriend and the cultural holiday family Dr. K. This is cute. Let's see what's in the bag. Oh, fancy. This is so cute. I almost don't want to open it, but I'm very tempted to read the ingredients. <laughs> Oh my goodness, why am I like this? But that's a massage oil. 
It looked like a body wash, a scrub, a body butter, essential oil, and a bath salt. That's pretty. Everything in there looked pretty natural in terms of ingredients. Anyways, this is the start of, I guess, the part two of my trip. Um, oof, my shoulder. The massage that I had yesterday, although in the moment it felt good, she definitely applied a little bit too much pressure on this side. One thing I noticed about the traditional Balinese massage is that they apply the pressure. And usually in the US or St. Croix or wherever when I'm getting massages, I have to tell them like apply more pressure. But up here, I almost have to tell them to ease up a little bit. And I like my mass like I like to feel the pressure in my massages, but I'm a sore. I'm a little sore right here. Cause she were really like gain in there yesterday right here. But all is well. Anyways, I'm about to declode, decompress, and relax. Um, the rest of the ladies were in the process of leaving the airport the last time I checked my the group chat. So they should probably be here in the next hour or so because the airport might be an hour away. So um, I have time. And even when they get here, like, Ain't nobody able to do nothing at this hour. Everybody gonna go to their room anyways. So um, the most I might do is meet them out in the lobby just to greet everybody and then come back to my room. And then tomorrow, the adventures begin. I am definitely going back to Bumi Sehat before I leave Bali. So in any of the days that we have like free time, I gotta find my way over there. I don't know how or when, but I gotta do it. Like, I am... I don't have the words to explain right now, so I'm gonna just cut this video before it's extra long, but... That made my trip. Like, being there made my trip. Meeting Ibu Rabin made my trip. That's it. That's all I gotta say. Anyways peace happy rising okay so first day waking up in a hotel i have to admit i miss peace kitchen that's the name of the air that's the main name of the um guest house for ibu robin that we were staying in peace kitchen i miss it because in the morning like the sun just shined right into my window and I opened the window and I could just stick my head out and I saw the sun. Um, but this this hotel is so beautiful. So I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm just <sighs> anyways. <laughs> so I'm on the balcony for my hotel room. I don't have much of a view. <laughs> it's a wall, but at least they make the wall, you know, plush and greenery with all of the plants so that's nice if this was the US I'm pretty sure this would just be a brick wall that I was looking at so this is the view outside of my hotel room I mean out the view from my balcony anyways I think it's a little after 7 and everybody have to meet in the, in the lobby for 8.30 today we are going to the bali swing you know the famous swing that all the tourists go to and we're also going to the sacred monkey forest i'm a little i'm a little nervous about both to be honest <laughs> one i'm scared of heights but i ain't coming all the way to bali to not get on that swing so we're gonna see what happens and two them monkeys be gangstering the damn tourists, okay? Taking their stuff. And Ari, the, um, the young lady who were our little guide at the birth center, 
for those past few days she was like when you go you have to be very careful because they will take your bag they will take your your food don't tease them like she was like be very careful first of all when we told her we were going there she her facial expression was like why <laughs> it's clearly just a tourist attraction place because it looks like the locals have no interest <laughs> they're like oh, we see monkeys all the time we do not care so um yeah we're going to those two places today and it's a full day we leave the hotel at nine and it seems like we don't return until five so i gotta figure out what i'm wearing today because i don't know yet but Anyways, let me go and get ready. Um, I'm trying to be out of my room by 8 so I can get grab a quick bite to eat before we head out. Some of the ladies are already at breakfast. Breakfast is from 6.30. Starts at 6.30. When I'm on vacation, I want to wake up when I want, take my time, <laughs> eat, and then go about my business. Um, like I was doing the past few days, but I'm gonna have fun anyways. Anyways, let me go get ready. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> it's 8.07, y'all. I'm late. Um, I'm gonna see how fast I could drink some tea and eat some fruits before 8.30. Fit today. Just cute and comfy since we're going to the um, monkey sanctuary. I want it to be comfortable. But you know, we always gotta keep it cute too. Yeah, let me go and figure this out. I don't even remember what floor the, the um, restaurant is on. I was gonna wear sneakers, but I don't got time to put on sneakers, so I'm just throwing on these slippers for now. If I have time, I'll come back to my room and change. I don't know. But yeah, let's go. So this is breakfast. Hi. Hi. I'm good. <laughs> Jagila, Daniel? Yes. 510. Yes, please. Thank you. Look my people. Hi, morning. No, I'll sit with them. <laughs> and tell them who you are too. My name is Auntie M. First name, Auntie, last name, M. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm awake enough to read, we see the ritual every day. Yeah, so that is the offering. Even this very s small offering, made from the uh, small basket, put the flower, and then put rice, and sometimes cigarettes, and sometimes candy. Yeah, this is a kind of the offer. Um, you know, in order not confusing, ladies, because the Hindu religion only believe in one God. So this was our tour guide throughout our stay in Bali. His name is Ariana, and he did such an amazing job of, a, of sharing the Balinese culture, traditions, spiritual beliefs, and values. So here he was explaining to us how they make the offerings that they put out every day. Um, if you watch my previous video, you will see that I was showing like the little plate of offerings they put out in front of their homes, business establishments, and hotels everywhere. He also shared with us the Balinese philosophy called Tri Hita Karina, which is a philosophy in which they believe to live in harmony with the divine, God, nature, and people, humanity. And that value right there is what made me feel so connected to Bali and the people there. So we're at the swing. Hi. Hi. Give me a bracelet first. Oh, you purple. Oh, you rocked it first. Absolutely. Simple, simple. We're at the swing. I'm low-key scared of heights, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I didn't come all this way not to do it. Great things are happening. Dress. 
princess. You know, I have to go with gold because we stay channeling goddess Oshun. So, yeah. I'm so nervous. So I don't remember who I asked to record me on the swing, but they ended up zooming in, which was actually not the best thing to do to capture the beauty of me on the swing. But they ended up they ended up zooming in and that is why this clip is actually not the best view at all, but I still wanted to share it. However, wait till the end of the video and you'll see pictures of me on the swing and then pictures all of the pictures that I took doing the activities we did in this vlog. Just finished with Aloha Swing and I did four different ones. I love them. I'll insert pictures somewhere. It was so much fun. Like I feel so adventurous and that's not how I used to be. I love it for me. Like for Panamanians, it's like going to Chiriki by Volcan Baru. <laughs> We're in the um these are all coffee plants. Yeah. We're in a coffee farm, coffee plant. I don't know how to I don't know what it's called exactly, but this is where they grow coffee. Wait, what? Alright, alright. What, what's banjo? Oh. This, this is Luwa. It's a Luwa. type of mongoose. Luwa. Yeah, it's a type of mongoose. So, this animal, they will eat all the sweet fruit like papaya, banana, and coffee. Mm -hmm. But when they eat the coffee, they digest only the skin. Because red skin of coffee, the taste is sweet. Mm -hmm. So, they digest the skin and then swallow the beans. They ferment it on the stomach and mm -hmm. then they will pull. The poo comes out is still whole bean. So we collect oh. the poo from the wild and then we will process for Lua coffee. What's the name of the creature? That's yeah. how that's how coffee is made? Uh, no, some brand of coffee. Some rare expensive coffee. Cappuccino. Oh. Cappuccino. Oh. So the cappuccino oh. is made from the poo poo. From the different, different. I mean, cappuccino is is not a cappuccino, oh. but cat cat is the animal. That's poo, the animal. So it's a cat. Yeah. So cat poo cat poo cappuccino. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What's the What's the name of this animal? Lua. That's a lua. lua. I said oh, yeah. lemur, but it's the a lua. The lua coffee is lula? from the animal's name. Lua. Okay. But 
this animal we keep on the cage only for sample only okay. for showing to the people mm. so maximum two weeks on the cage and then release back to the jungle okay. and then get another one yeah because he looks oh. doesn't look happy <laughs> no, i wouldn't want to be in a cage now. Yeah. so they sleep all the day and oh. they will active in the night oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 yeah so in the night they will yeah. so active. he's completely ignoring us yeah. so every morning we have go to the jungle and find the food below of the, uh, below of the coffee place, uh, coffee plant, I mean. Mm. So, yeah. okay. And I will show you the process. Interesting. Process. This is just more reasons for me not to drink coffee. Not that I'm interested in doing it. Coffee is horrible for womb health. <laughs> So I had to speed this part up because it was actually a very long clip but here she was just showing us the process of how they process <laughs> the process of how they process the coffee beans after they retrieve it from the Lua's shit. Um, once they retrieve the coffee beans they clean it, deshell it, wash it again, roast it, then grind it and then they were also showing us all the other different things they grow on the farm such as ginger, um, turmeric, lemongrass, rosella which we call hibiscus. Um, what else they grow on there? Clove, chili peppers, just a lot of different herbs and spices. I actually purchased some of the herbs and spices from their gift shop which was actually pretty nice. Tea and coffee tasting. Of course, I didn't taste the coffee, but I, I taste all the teas. Um, the local ginger tea. I wish I had a Oh, lemongrass. Oh, cocoa. I know Bali cocoa. I was still in Angkor. I ran into somebody from Kenya. The hibiscus and the mangosteen. A girl. Had a turmeric tea, a lemon tea. I love all the teas. I don't know I'm a tea person. But the mangosteen. That one right there. She said yes. It's my favorite. Yeah, I look at her. I said, "What part of Africa are you from?" I knew right away she was from Africa. Yeah, I said I asked. And she said she was Kenya. I said Bariyaku. And then no, she said. You see the benefits of the, um, they call it rosella here, but it's actually hibiscus. It improves the health of your skin, which is why I use hibiscus in my skincare products. And we chat a little bit. It's another day, another beautiful day in Bali. I am running late. We're supposed to meet in the lobby for 8.55 because the bus is supposed to leave at 9 and it's like 8.50. This is my outfit today. I bought this in Bali. It's so cute. Isn't it? I'm gonna see if I could at least go grab some tea real quick. I'm gonna message Kanuma and let her know that <laughs> I'm running a little late. And um yeah. Let me head out. So today we are going to the monkey forest because we didn't get to go yesterday and then I think we're supposed to go to a traditional Balinese dance class or something and something else I can't remember anyways let's see where did they take us peace so we're at the monkey forest this is the entrance. Everything here is beautiful, no matter where you go. And you're gonna always find some statues greeting you at the entrance. I gotta make sure these monkeys don't gangsta me though. About here is that they always teach about their culture. Statue of Goddess of Sea. Three. Goddess of Durga. Just 
You know I love stuff like this. So we're in the monkey yeah. forest. Look at that. I swear everything here is so beautiful. So I'm gonna radiance is from it's literally a forest, y'all. There's no cages, no nothing. They just. From clear water. It's just a forest with a path to walk. <laughs> okay, so this is the entrance. Actually, I went to the Jahila, that's right. Yeah. We do the herbal stuff, right? She will nurse him. Look at the little baby. She will nurse him. This is so beautiful. Fight <laughs> me, <laughs> 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 I just love any statue that shows the women breasts. <laughs> I just was saying that like he just sprawled. Everybody to see. He said, "I don't want take picture, take picture." He don't care. He just check it all out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, baby. sorry, sorry. <laughs> he said, I don't want a show, I'll give you a show. Okay, time's up. <laughs> she looking for some smoke. <laughs> Look at them, just chilling, minding the business. Oh, look this one here. There's a big one. There's a big guy there. Well, look at that one. That was very big. Yeah. It's a beautiful water fountain. It's very common to have a water fountain at the entrance of the homes in here. So we're going to the dance class now. So we're at the dance class. I think I'm going to do a time lapse of this one. Hey, ready to dance?
Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. The other group about to perform. I want to record her. Man, you good. So it's downtown. Good. You see how he maneuvers this thing? The, the homes are so pretty. Everything is so pretty. Upstairs and downstairs. Look at this. So we are eating lunch here. Hopefully I could find something decent to eat. Oh, they're greeting us with flowers. Every time I think I don't look. Thank you so much. This is so pretty. This is so pretty. Again with the water fountain. I just love the culture. I love it so much. Everything is just so inviting and beautiful. Okay, let me go to the bathroom. When you at a restaurant and you could order a whole coconut as your drink. You can love somebody. We were together for five years. Leaving the restaurant. So we're here. So we're heading to the waterfall now. Clearly we gotta pass all of this stuff first. I should get my father a t-shirt. He's the only person I haven't gotten anything for yet. So after we ate lunch, we went to the Tenen Nungan Tegenungan waterfall. I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong, but this is such a beautiful waterfall, and there is a way to get down to the waterfall, but apparently that was not part of our excursion that day. So we only pretty much viewed the waterfall from the top and took pictures. Um, this is just another reason why I want to go back to Bali because I really wanted to do more nature stuff and going to a waterfall and actually getting in is one of the things that I would love to do. Go a little closer and see what instrument he's playing. Just got back to my hotel room. I look 
goodness, this shit's still wet. So yesterday, I traveled with my own watch clock because you just never know. But when I checked into this hotel, it didn't, it didn't have any wash cloths in the bathroom. And I didn't think nothing of it because I had my own. However, yesterday when I left, when room when um, housekeeping came and cleaned my room, they took my washcloth. <laughs> it's a white washcloth, so I guess they just assumed that it was the hotel own, but it's not. It's not even the same texture because it's bamboo. But, um... So I called last night when I was going to take my shower. I called the front desk to, you know, tell them like, hey, you took my washcloth. <laughs> so they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. We'll um, try and look for it. They came back, brought, bring in some washcloth. It's still not mine. Um, do I think I'm going to get it back? No. Which is unfortunate because... It's a good quality washcloth, y'all. Like good fabric. I mean, good material. Natural material. Um, anyways, so I just came back to the room and I see this here. And they say, um, it's an apology for, you know, they call it an inconvenience or whatever. But it's because of that. They left me some fruits i don't even know what this is and this is grapes that's banana but what is this i have no idea what this is and this is i don't know what this is either it's green i don't know what that is anyways today was a good day um y'all like my flower anyways i have a massage scheduled for today in like 30 minutes I want to go take a quick shower I have ref Ugh. I have a reflexology and a traditional Balinese massage schedule I'm gonna have to repack my suitcase tonight because I have things that I shopped <laughs> anyways whatever so I'm going to my appointment now This is the spa. It's beautiful in here. Everywhere is beautiful. Offering. They have offerings everywhere. Hi. Every time I go to a spa here, they bring you this towel. It smells like essential oil to wipe your hand it smells so good is it i don't know the lemongrass here just smells different it smells so good this is lemongrass on something and then they brought this hibiscus water with lime so it's the last day in this hotel and um, i'm going down to meet the group now i'm late but I was talking to my boys, so it is what it is. We're leaving this area. Here's my outfit today. Very cute and simple. I'm going to meet up with the group because we have a girlfriend circle. So, um, yeah. I don't even know where they are. It just said the ground floor, but I don't know where. I found that woman. Oh okay, so this was the day that we had to check out of the first hotel we were staying at, which was located in Ubud, Bali. And the name of that hotel was the Stala. So we checked out and we were heading to Kuta, Bali, which is another area in Bali. And Kuta is, in my opinion, a more touristy area. I definitely preferred Ubud, but um, the drive from Ubud to Kuta, we made stops along the way. And this was one of the first stops, which was at a silver, ma silver jewelry making um, family business. And we pretty much toured the facility. 
and they showed us the process of how they make handmade silver jewelry from start to finish which is actually pretty impressive um, next our tour guide was showing us because the silver making jewelry business is actually on a family compound so our tour guide was describing to us how a traditional Balinese family compound is set up in terms of them having the different buildings and temples located in different areas of the compound. You have the East Building, the West Building, the South Building, the North Building. Um, next we went to see how batik fabric is made from start to finish. and. This was actually very intriguing and it's amazing how they design these fabrics by hand. I think the lady was saying that one fabric takes two weeks to complete and that explains why batik fabric is so expensive. And they pretty much start with a blank canvas, like a white piece of fabric and they first draw the design with pencil, then they paint it with um, the wax and they continue to add color. Listen, it was just a process, let me tell you. I don't know how they do it, but it was very intriguing. They also had a store in there, but you was not allowed to film, so I could not capture that. However, we did go in and was able to shop. Now, I had no intentions to shop here, honestly. Like, first of all, this was one of the days in my trip that I was my spirits weren't high so I had no intentions on shopping but when I went in that store and started looking around I definitely found things to buy and I ended up actually buying um, my parents gifts in there and a bag for myself as well as some beautiful batik um, tie skirts so yeah i definitely enjoyed this this, this spot Ugh. i definitely enjoyed this stop more than i expected to so after what felt like hours of shopping at the batik shop we headed out and headed to lunch and i think lunch was our last stop before heading to the second hotel in kuta here at lunch and um, I was looking for something to order on the menu but even the things that you would think is like vegan friendly it's not like simply some stir-fried vegetables they put it in chicken broth And like honestly I'm tired of buying food that I'm just not enjoying or ends up hurting my belly making me gassy here when they say stir-fried veggies it's broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage and carrots and all of the veggies that really don't have much nutritional value and makes me gassy so I'm just I was just like, I don't want anything. Like, I'll figure out buying something to eat later or maybe getting something to eat at the hotel restaurant. Maybe they'll have a better option. But I'm tired of wasting my money on this food that it's just not it. So I got up from the table and I was just walking around the, um, the restaurant because everything is outdoors outdoorsy so um i was walking around and i just came up upon this altar this temple i guess it's an altar so i'm just sitting here and having a moment <laughs> i've been a little emotional since yesterday and um I know why I just haven't been okay not that I haven't been but because I'm here with a group and we're like we've been on the go 
I've had very small windows of time to kind of just like let myself cry so it kind of started yesterday morning and I was very emotional and just crying and missing the boys and then today I woke up emotional again and um, then I realized today is July 28th and makes two years since my children's father passed away and I remember the day I found out he was being rushed to the hospital like that same day I was I wasn't feeling well like I wasn't I didn't have a cold or I wasn't sick or anything it's just like my body was aching and um, it was just some weird symptoms but it wasn't directed to like me actually being sick um, and when I when I got the news that he passed away like my entire body seized up and some of you might find that weird because it's like we weren't together anymore I had done leave him I had no plans on going back to him all of that but I was with this man for a decade of my life I was with him for a decade I was with him for almost all of my 20s you know and we were still connected very much so like whatever he was going through I was feeling it physically in my body and here we are two years later and I'm, I am in a much better space I don't want anyone to think that I'm not I am mentally emotionally physically spiritually I am so much better and I'm loving the version of me I am now but I'm also trying to process or face the reality that at one point I loved him at one point things were good at one point he did treat me good at one point I did want to be with him for the rest of my life and I never allowed myself to mourn his debt in that capacity because once I left I only I only allowed myself to remember the bad times and not any of the good times because when I was in the relationship I convinced myself to only focus on the good so that I don't think about the bad and want to leave because of course I was staying for the children I was toughing it out and trying to keep my family together but when he died my children didn't only lose their father but I lost any hopes of a life that I once saw with him and that hurts oh my goodness Anyway, so I've been kind of emotional all day and in between the, the stops and the touring and the shopping, like, I just want to be alone and cry. So I just walked away from everybody so I could have a moment. Anyways, that's all. I'm going to get myself together and go back by the group before people start to wonder where I disappeared to but it's not easy you know so I did end up getting something to eat at the restaurant our tour guide Ariana actually asked the kitchen to prepare me something 
so I was so grateful for that but anyways after leaving the restaurant we headed to the hotel and this is the entrance of it and um, once everybody was checked in I head up to my room and here is a little quick speed up tour of my room it was so beautiful I had actually loved this hotel more than the last one although I like the last location better than that location but the hotel was absolutely gorgeous like the video did not do it justice at all so when I was at Peace Kitchen visiting the birthing center the young lady sent me a contact for someone who does henna tattoos so I arranged for her to meet me at my hotel this night so that she can give me a henna tattoo so that is what the last tiny clip it will show but that is it for this vlog. Stay tuned for part four. A bit. Okay, so somebody is actually on their way here to do me a henna tattoo. So I want to hurry up and get settled. Because they're probably going to text me and say they're downstairs in a bit. I know this is a long ass video, but don't go nowhere yet. The pictures are right now. Got that goddess energy, it's in your soul, queen, manifesting your reality.